So let's finish then by talking about the other non-trivial side effect of Augmentin, which is drug-induced cholestasis. So what is this? Well, cholestasis means that the bile stops moving through the liver. So choli means bile, stasis is referring to static. So it means the bile is standing still and not moving the way it should. So we've already discussed the biliary system a little bit. So you have the liver producing bile, the liver cells producing bile, and then you have a pipe work, a huge amount of pipes, so starting with very small pipes and then they coalesce to form slightly bigger pipes and then those coalesce to form bigger pipes, so there's a huge sort of pipe work inside the liver and eventually it all goes down to the big pipe, which is the common bile duct, which carries all of the bile from all of the rest of the system down to the duodenum where it's uh, deposited. Now, in those, in that pipe work, up at the top where you have tiny little pipes, what is actually making that bile, that bile fluid actually move? The answer is that there are cells lining those tubes, the surface of the tubes is made up by cells, and those cells have on their surface little cilia that have to move, they have to waft, and they're wafting the bile along and that's what is making the bile move through those little tubes so that it's going in the right direction to get into bigger tubes and drain all the way down to the common bile duct. In drug-induced cholestasis what is believed to happen and of course this is biomedical theory this isn't something that people have actually seen I don't think so it is a theory. The theory is that for some reason, the drug causes those cilia to stop functioning. And this doesn't happen in everyone. Again, this is a rare side effect. I would say actually even rarer than um, the clostridial colitis. In some people though, for some reason, the drug causes those cilia to stop functioning and therefore the bile comes to a standstill. It doesn't move anymore. And then the liver cells can't chuck out any more bile into the tubes because the tubes are already completely full of bile, so the whole system's congested up, and therefore the liver cells uh, chuck the bilirubin, which is the main, one of the main constituents of the bile, back into the bloodstream. So you then end up with far too much bilirubin in your bloodstream. Uh, remember, bilirubin is a waste product that's produced from the breakdown of red blood cells, so we're turning over red blood cells all the time, so our body is producing bilirubin all the time, and normally it goes to the liver and then gets um, put into the bile and then excreted from the body uh, into the intestine and then it comes out at the other end. But if you get cholestasis then the whole biliary system gets congested and therefore the liver cells stop being able to get rid of the bilirubin so the bilirubin starts building up in the blood and that makes you jaundiced. So I've written that down here. So it causes jaundice which is hyperbilirubinemia. So bilirubin is yellow so as the bilirubin gets higher and higher in your blood and you get more and more hyperbilirubinemic, the bilirubin starts to spill out into all the other tissues of the body, including the skin and including the sclera of the eyes. And in the skin, it starts to make your skin appear yellow. And in the sclera, it starts to make the white of your eyes appear yellow. And when you're clinically yellow to look at in that way, we say that you are jaundiced. So the horrible truth of augmenting is that in some individuals, augmenting can do this and does do this. Uh, other antibiotics can cause it as well. In particular, flucloxacidin is the other one alongside augmenting that is bad for causing drug-induced cholestasis. They're both, um, compared to other drugs, high risk for causing drug-induced cholestasis. The other antimicrobial agent I've seen drug-induced cholestasis happen in uh, was an antifungal oral tabinafine the patient had been put on and that caused drug-induced cholestasis. So I think they've been put on it to treat potentially fungal nail infections. So some people can get fungal infections in their toenails which turn their toenails uh, a horrible sort of yellowy colour. And it doesn't, it's not dangerous, it doesn't cause any problem because the fungal infection doesn't get into uh, the foot tissue, uh, but people don't like it because it doesn't look nice. Uh, so they sometimes end up taking oral fungal tablets for weeks and weeks, and that's usually tabinafine, and I've seen tabinafine cause drug-induced cholestasis. But the antibiotics that are known to be bad for this are augmentin and flucloxacidin, and I have seen cases both for flucloxacidin and augmentin of drug-induced cholestasis being caused by them.
So what actually happens to these people then? So they take their antibiotic course, let's say they've been put on Augmentin for a week, maybe uh, to treat a chest infection. So they went to their GP with a chest infection. They weren't so ill that they needed to go to hospital. So their GP prescribed them some Augmentin for a week. They went home, they took their Augmentin, and let's say they were fine for a little bit. But then uh, a week later, after the Augmentin stopped, they start to turn yellow. And that's usually the way it happens. Usually there's a delay. They stop the antibiotic course, and then a few weeks down the line, they start to turn yellow. And it doesn't get better. They just turn yellower and yellower and yellower and yellower. And of course, they go back to their GP or they go to hospital directly. But if they go to their GP first, the GP is probably just going to refer them into hospital after doing a blood test and seeing how high their bilirubin is. Um, so they end up in hospital and then being investigated. And the problem is that there isn't really a test that you can do to confirm that the reason that the Billy Rubin is so high is actually due to the drug. So they end up having a huge number of investigations usually to look for the cause of why they've suddenly become jaundiced. So they end up having probably an ultrasound of their liver. And then when that doesn't find the cause, they may end, might end up having a CT of their liver. And when that doesn't find the cause, they might end up having an MRCP of their liver. So an MRI scan of the liver and biliary system, along with a whole bunch of blood tests to look for liver problems to try and find the cause of the Billy Rubin. And the, the massive risk for the patient is that none of this finds the cause. So you really hope that some clever consultant gastroenterologist comes along and actually takes a very thorough history and finds out about the fact that they had this antibiotic course a few weeks ago and then starts to think maybe this is drug-induced cholestasis. Because if that doesn't happen, if people don't start to suspect that this is the diagnosis, then the patient potentially is going to end up having invasive tests done, such as a liver biopsy, which involves a huge needle having to be put into the liver to grab a little piece so that it can then be chopped up and put on microscope slides for the histopathologist to look down uh, and see what is actually happening to the liver cells to see if they can find a diagnosis. It does eventually self-resolve, so the antibiotic course has stopped, so eventually the cilia start to work again and the congestion is eased and the bilirubin goes back down again. Uh, but that can take weeks for it to actually happen, weeks of being yellow. And being that yellow usually involves then a, a lengthy hospital stay with a whole bunch of tests being done, potentially invasive tests being done that could have horrible side effects. So it, it's not good for the patient, drug-induced cholestasis. It's really, really horrible. To add to the woes of this, this is a condition that causes painless jaundice. Now, there are other conditions that classically cause painless jaundice, in particular pancreatic cancer and bile duct cancer called cholangiocarcinoma. So I've written that down here, cholangiocarcinoma. So col means bile, angio means duct, so bile duct, and then carcinoma means cancer, so cancer of the bile duct. Um, so these conditions, pancreatic CA and cholangiocarcinoma, classically present as a elderly or middle-aged person who has no abdominal pain but comes to you because they have turned yellow. Why am I yellow, doctor? And everyone knows about these conditions and that that is how they present. So when someone with drug-induced cholestasis presents the same way, I, they don't get any abdominal pain with this condition either, they just turn yellow, often the clinicians who see them think that that is potentially what their diagnosis is going to be, one of these two, and therefore they start to warn the patients that the investigations that they're doing, these scans that they're doing, are ultimately to look for these things. So add to all the woes of this condition the distress that the patient is going to go through because they start to think that they've got either pancreatic cancer or bile duct cancer and these are not nice forms of cancer they're forms of cancer that the surgical removal of them is horrific and even once they've been surgically removed they often become metastatic so they have a very high fatality rate so it's really really horrible drug-induced cholestasis you turn yellow which is horrible you end up going to hospital, probably for a protracted stay, which is not nice, and you're having the people in hospital tell you that you've probably got some horrible form of cancer. Just a few little further points about the symptoms of jaundice. So when you have very high bilirubin, you turn yellow. Also, the bilirubin has an effect on the brain and makes people feel not good, tired, 
um, malaise, just not good. Also, when the bilirubin is in the skin, not only does it make the skin yellow, but it also makes the skin really itchy. So people usually are really, really itchy all over their body because of the bilirubin present in the skin. So it's really not nice jaundice. So drug-induced cholestasis, even though it does self-resolve, the actual experience of having this is horrible overall. So it's not a trivial side effect of augmentin at all. You do not want this to happen, and it's something that you should think about and why you ideally want to avoid this antibiotic if there are other antibiotics that could do just as good a job but don't carry the same risk of drug-induced cholestasis as it. So I think we will end there. Overall, I do still think Augmentin is a wonderful antibiotic. However, I have seen people get both of these two major side effects from it, the clostridial colitis and the drug-induced cholestasis. And seeing those people with that does always stick in the back of my mind whenever I'm thinking about prescribing this. And I always do think, is there actually a better option, other antibiotics we could use, that wouldn't carry the same risks of those because they are horrible. And when you've seen people go through them, it really does kind of make you think twice before you prescribe augmentin. But it is a wonderful broad spectrum antibiotic and it does hit so many different types of infections. And most people who take it don't get clostridial colitis or drug-induced cholestasis. They might just get a bit of mild diarrhea whilst it fixes the problem that they had with the infection. So there are pros to augmenting and there are cons to augmenting and you need to weigh them up yourself as a clinician.